Centerville historians organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegand, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heike when the postmaster general informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heike? Thus the village of Centerville became Heike. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish. But when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Heike. Two miles west of Heike, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heike and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Rover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heike, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. Okay, today's date is uh, November 9th, 2009, and it would be Greater Centerville Historians' 10 years of oral history in the Cleveland and the Centerville areas. According to Cheryl Bauer, this is uh, our website now where history lives. Super okay. glad to see that. That's going to be a real help. Where history lives. Dot org. Boy, lots of food and coffee and stolen and all kinds of wonderful food. Okay, the line is forming to enjoy some of the good food that's on the tables here. <laughs> Wonderful turnout so far. I'm glad to see that. Thank 
Yeah. 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 Good weather to come out and dine a little bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yes, that's good to see. <laughs> Audrey is taking care of the coffee here. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. <laughs> what is that now? Salt. Salt. Oh, my goodness. And that's crackling. That's crackling. Oh, that's crackling. Well, yeah. Remember those? Kathy, I'm going to have to walk along the table with you, okay? After a while, I'm going to be right back. Because I don't know the identification of all this good food. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, Lloyd. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> He's a shy guy. I don't think so. He's got the Packer all He got the Packer. He's proud of him. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How are you doing tonight? Hi. Just fine. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> you guys are, you're not camera shy anymore. I've no. trained you well, right? <laughs> well, I'm so, what's that again? I said I was a village clerk for 32 years. I saw lots of people. Lots of people doing things. <laughs> well, I'm so glad everybody could come out for this event. He was going every two weeks. Get pumped out, 20 pounds of water. <laughs> okay, I got a young lady here who's been attending our meetings for many, many years, and she made something special from her own uh, kitchen tonight. Go right ahead. I'm Audrey Ertl, and I made the German-style potato salad. Oh, boy. And it looks like it's going well, too. <laughs> this is a real... I haven't had this since in about 100 years. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's coffee here. I can bring it to you. I can tell from my advantage point that this is not Irish food. Irish <laughs> food. <laughs> Maybe when that group comes, they just take their chair with them. I don't know. Here we are getting our pictures oh, taken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marie, he's watching what you're eating. Yes, I'm. I'm he's watching what you're eating. <laughs> yeah, she's used to that. <laughs> Yeah, sir. <laughs> it came out of the treasury, and then some of us paid for some, you know, and some others paid for some. I'll give you a few bucks the Oh, we're having the summer. Well, thanks a lot. I'm having a at night because of that. With this kind of weather and the way it's going to continue for November, I'm happy as can be. <laughs> October turned me off completely. <laughs> Hi. Would you like to Hi, Brian. Hi, Sadie. How are you? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, I'm with a young lady who has been working with us for 10 years. She's been our spark plug uh, of this Greater Centerville Historian Group, and she'd like to identify herself and tell us what day it is and what occasion we're celebrating. My name is Kathy Sixel, and it is uh, November 9th, 09, Correct. and we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Greater Centerville Historians. Wow, great. We have met at LTC since the second meeting, and we are meeting for 10 years, and we have like up to 52 people at times. Okay. And this has just been a wonderful experience, so tonight we wanted to do an appreciation supper. Okay. So that's what we did, and we have prepared with the help of Audrey Ertl, Charlie and Cheryl Bauer and myself, we prepared an old-fashioned uh, German supper. Okay, very so, good, very good. And Unique. I will tell you what the foods are. Okay, very good. <laughs> I'll let you start out with this right here. This is bread. This is homemade bread that I have baked you all have week. Been, all week? You worked oh, on a homemade bread? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. It's real different. Like like my mom baked years ago, sometimes a little burny on the outside. And, yeah, that's the way I like yeah, it. Yeah, it was. That's how it was. And this is ham, okay. salt, okay. straight bologna, summer sausage. Very good. This is tongue sausage. It's a version of blood sausage. Okay, very this good. This is cooked cheese, which All right. everybody had, and a variety of cheeses. Very good. That is liver sausage. Okay, very good. And what and is this? Is this a mustard? This is mustard. This is ground mustard. Okay. Horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. Pickles. Okay. These, uh, this is a salmon egg spread that you eat on bread. All right. And cracklings, the remainder of when you render lard. Really? The real cracklings? The real cracklings. Uh, and this hmm. the wheat came from Newton. This okay. is macaroni salad. All right. German potato salad prepared by Audrey Erdl. Great. And salts made by uh, Romelda Wh uh, Albright. Oh, okay. She was Romelda Wil That's Wilmer. That's right. But Wil Wilmer. 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 There we go. She was, yeah. yeah. And that is herring. Herring. Oh, my goodness. And our desserts. Yes. Our stalling. Okay. Apple cake made by Eileen Bailitz. Okay. Old fashioned cheesecake. All right. And German chocolate German cake with chocolate or with um, caramel frosting like they made years okay. ago. Okay. Was it, was that um? Is there a name for that kind of a chocolate cake? Uh, it was a German chocolate. German cake. chocolate. Cake. It was German. And we're celebrating uh, with all our veterans. I'm going to acknowledge a few things like the veterans that are buried, I believe, or. Uh, that's correct. Okay. From the various cemeteries, and also we're going to acknowledge Amy Kruger, okay. who uh, was shot down in Texas this past week. Yes. yes. And they had a vigil for her last night, which I attended, and it was very wonderful. Okay. And so, she's a Keel student. She was a Keel girl, right? Okay. She's 29. Very good. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Kathy, for telling us all about our uh, things that were on display here and what we plan to do this evening. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jerry. Loud enough? Be quiet. Good. That's good. Right. That's good. Just right. Can't be good. <laughs> Everybody watching me? Do you, you see where the microphone is? If you want to be heard, you got to have the microphone here. Because if it's down here, you won't hear me say anything. You got to have it up here. Okay. We're gonna let Kathy start this special evening tonight, and I want to welcome everybody here. Wow, what a nice group! And everybody looks rather intelligent tonight. <laughs> and full. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and it's just wonderful to see all of you, and I hope you enjoy the old-fashioned German buffet. Yeah. I try to find foods that we don't eat every day anymore. So and keep eating. You can go out there in the media and keep eating. There's lots of food left, so. It is November 11th, 2009. 10th, 9th, 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 okay. <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, Greater Centerville Historians Group, and uh, my name is Kathy Sixel. Very good. Are you going to do introductions first, sure. Jerry? Sure, we'll just do name only. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Do you want me to carry the mic around? If you would like to do Charlie that. Charlie want to? Whatever. There we go. Nice and loud. Go right ahead. John Wiegand. Thank you. Paul Jacoby. Thank you. 
Frederick Jacoby. Thank you. Chris Cannell. Thank you. Marilyn Craning. Thank you. Leroy Schnell. Thank you. Bernice Schnell. Thank you. Kay Schill. Victor Schill. Thank you. Audrey Erdl. Donna Bursch. Marie Volan. Ruth Russell. Thank you. Don Schneider. Joanne Mortimer. Marie Wolfel. Selma Vogel. Thank you. Janet Miller. Edward <laughs> Yeager. Darlene Yeager. Thank you. Andrew Crack. Thank you. Bonnie Crack. Thank you. Cindy Hoon. Thank you. Brian Kramer. Good. Marie Pippard. Edith Litzy. Naomi Schmidt. Good. Dan Schmidt. Thank you, Dan. Walter Kress. Thank you. Kathy Wagner. Peggy Kress. Thank you. Joel Kress. Good. Lloyd Wiggle. Romelda Albright. Willie Kleinhans. Joyce Kramer. Thank you. Charlie Bauer. Good. <laughs> Irene Dine. Thank you. Alice Mathias. Warren Fires. Rick Firestar. Good, thank you. Cheryl Bauer. Thank you. Oh, over here. I missed one. Got one? We missed one. <laughs> oh, there we go. And Kenny Hawkins as the beaver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll follow you, Charlie. <laughs> My name is Kathy Sixel, and I would like to tell you a little bit how we began. On the screen are the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people that were at the very, very first meeting ten years ago. I did the um, history for the township of Centerville when it was 150 years old. And I had a lot of the photos and stuff at my home, and Richard Wiegand was unable to attend. So he came over and looked at the photos. And he said, gee, wouldn't it be fun to start a group and let's record the history? And of course, it is our, our dream to someday have a hard copy of this all, and maybe that will happen too. So I will tell you who the first people were. We tried to pick old and young, Richard and I. We tried to pick, uh, pick people that had a lot of knowledge. Uh, first of all is Richard Wiegand and uh, Val Jean Abarco, Diana Cole, myself. Dorothy Anderson, Marie Pippard, the late Florence Kress, and Wally Kress. And of course, Dorothy isn't with us anymore, and Florence isn't with us, and um, Diana and uh, Val Jean has left, or they don't come anymore, so. But that's how we started. Our first meeting was at the Red Arrow School, uh, which is owned by Chris Cannell and Kathy Pierce. And we were sitting around a table and we were discussing this and that and we went from one topic to another topic and when we looked at the tape, it was awful. We had the video but you could just see our backs and you couldn't hear us talking. Well then I knew of a, a gentleman that did videoing in our church and his name is Jerry O'Neill. So Richard Wiegan asked Jerry if he would be the videographer and um, a couple months later, Charlie joined us, and that's how we've been going since that ever, ever since. And it's been a very nice group to work with, and I hope you enjoyed the appreciation evening. And um, one uh, other thing, I, was, I want to thank Audrey Erdl. She brought the um, German potato salad. Eileen Braylitz brought a cake. Lots of other people called me. Cheryl, helped, uh, Cheryl and Charlie Bauer helped, and... Audrey helped today, and if I forgot somebody, I'm sorry. And most of all, I want to thank all of you for coming. And I also want to uh, recognize uh, Cleveland State Bank because they have helped us. They gave us a nice donation. Uh, Cindy's out of the room right now, I guess. Okay. A nice donation, and that's what made it possible 
for us to uh, do the DVDs in the library. Has anybody ever checked one out? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> We're really used, huh? <laughs> so, um, I wanted to have uh, Brian Kramer come up. He is the chairman of the town of Centerville, and he's going to uh, speak a few words. Well, Ten years ago, obviously, yep. because we have the 160th anniversary of the town coming up in 1850. The town of Centerville was formed two years after Wisconsin became a state. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been the chairman of the town of Centerville for going on my 21st year, and part of the reason, besides liking, enjoying serving uh, the community, I have a strong history and roots in Centerville. Um, my I'm the sixth generation on my farm. Um, sixth generation on the farm, and it was settled in 1847. One of the one of the first settlers. So I do appreciate um, the work you guys do, keeping a record of it. If I think back, my grandfather was 96 when he died, and I can remember him. We didn't talk a whole lot, but anyway, I, the few times I did talk to my grandmother about historical things, um, I wish I would have wrote down or videotaped them. The person who didn't have videotape back then, but it would have been nice to have a history to remember it. So I do appreciate the work that this group is doing in recording and keeping a record of the history and what that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Congratulations on ten years. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Now has Cindy returned? Cindy is the village president. She also works at Cleveland Bank. Yes, thank you. Welcome, everyone. And first of all, congratulations on 10 years. Uh, you guys are doing just an excellent, excellent job. Um, I haven't had the privilege, like Brian, to be able to talk to Grandma about some of those things on my husband's side, certainly, but not on mine. But uh, my father was 96 years old when he passed away last year. And it's just like that piece of history is gone. Um, I had to do a... a presentation for the veterans group one time and I had a chance to talk to him how his brothers would get on the train and leave for World War One, and I thought my god what a traumatic thing that must have been and you know if I never had to make that presentation I never ever would have talked to my dad about that so I look at a little piece of history that got passed on and I think you guys are doing just a fantastic job um, someday what great history there is in the village of Cleveland we all have the privilege of having a Marie Pippert and Irene Dine and everybody else who's from the village of Cleveland give you that history, but years from now, people are going to say, what used to be down there? Um, so definitely a, a huge thank you for preserving our history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Cindy. Oh, this weekend can't come to the meetings all the time because he is in Spooner. He's the county ag agent up in Spooner, Wisconsin, which is four or five hours away from here. Uh, seeing we are coming upon Veterans Day, I got just a little history. I got one, before I get to that, I got one other little piece of history. And some of you were probably there, and it happened this day in 1947, right here in Cleveland. Anybody got a clue? Oh, come on! <laughs> the Veterans Community Park was established this day in 1947. Now, just a little bit about Veterans Day. And originally it was called Armistice Day. And it coincides with the end of World War I, which was November 11th in 1918. And it was first celebrated by Great Britain. And then Woodrow Wilson in 1919 had Armistice Day established here in the United States to honor those that served the United States in the military. And in 1938, it was made a legal holiday. And then again in 1954, Congress changed the name to Veterans Day which we are celebrating today. So keeping that in mind, we are going to say the Pledge of Allegiance tonight again. 
but I'm going to ask that all those that wore the military uniform, where we say the pledge, I would ask that you render a salute, and if you allow me, I will call the order. And the reason we do this, and it just been the last couple of years that we're, if you're in civilian clothes, you do have, you earn the right to salute the flag without having the uniform on. So we're going to do the pledge, and then we're going to do something that we've been wanting to do for the longest time, and we're going to call the roll at the different cemeteries, and we're going to go through all the six cemeteries, and we're going to call the people that serve in, in uniform. Some are veterans because, well, they're all veterans, the way I look at it, but some of them didn't serve during a particular war. They were just in service during peacetime. And, and I, I got my six volunteers here, and they all volunteered to, to read the names, and, uh, and I already was told that the list is not complete. And I know two lists that should be complete because we, we worked months on it, and that would be the St. George and St. Wendell should be correct. But I know that we might be missing some, but we'll get to that. So at this time, I'm gonna ask everybody to please stand for the pledge. Veterans, present. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready, two. We're going to change pictures. Now, you can be seated. You can be seated. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to have my volunteers come up here and get them seated on this side over here so we can go through the different cemeteries. Okay. To honor our military dead at the Saxon Cemetery, I'm going to ask Kathy to light one candle. And now I'm going to have John call the roll. The first cemetery that we will be doing is the Saxon Cemetery, which is located on South Union Road, about a mile west of Cleveland. It's in the town of Centerville. They gave me a list tonight of the ones that they had. There were a few missing. I've got my own list, and I put them in chronological order according to the wars. So I'll read them that way rather than alphabetical. From the Civil War, this would be the 1860s, August Bartle, Ernst Dossler, Herman Hoon, Ernst Jenich, Charles Lorenz, Friedrich Ulrich, Johann Ulrich, they were brothers, William Stolzmann, and Carl Rick. There were nine Civil War veterans, and all of them served in the Wisconsin Infantry. Uh, moving to the next war, we had one from the Spanish-American War, which is 1898, and that was August Hoon, who served in the Army. Then moving to World War I, which is 1917, 1918, we have Alfred Hallenstein, who presumably served in the Army. Uh, I couldn't find the actual record, but I would assume he did. <coughs> and Stephen Cornick, who also served in the Army. <coughs> Stephen was seven, he went for the year, he was born in 1900, so he was 17, <coughs> 18 when he, was, when he was there. But actually, he was stationed in Hawaii, and his duty was to shoe horses, which <coughs> I'm kind of laugh about that now, but that was important in World War I. Uh, then we go to <coughs> World War II, which is 1941-45. Leroy Wiegand in, served in the Army. Willard Reinemann, also the Army. Herman Hefke, Army. Robert Lorfeld, Army. And we have Charles Klesik, who <coughs> served in the Army in World War II and Korea. <coughs> then we move to the 1950s. Francis Hurth in the Army, served in Korea. Gordon Crest, Army, Korea. Uh, Merlin Hansen was drafted in the Army because he was 
blind in one eye and was supposed to serve in the Marines. They gave him an honorable discharge. Uh, he would have served, but I guess <coughs> they didn't think that one eye was quick enough. He was willing to do it. Charles Kramer served in the Coast Guard at several different locations. Donald Sixel served in the Navy, started at San Diego. Gerald Bialfus served in the Army. And I <coughs> talked to his wife about this. Uh, she said he talks about the Rhine, or talked about the Rhine River, so we, we assume he was stationed in Germany. <coughs> From the 1960s, the Vietnam era, uh, Ronald Garvey, he served in the Army, did not serve in Vietnam, but he was in the Army from, well, during the Vietnam era. In the 1970s, Larry Albright served in the Army. So, uh, Saxon Cemetery does have 25 people who served in the armed services who are buried there. Okay. Thank you. John Brown, C-R-A-U-N. Nicholas Brown, Raymond Casper, or do you want to know what's your? Nicholas Casper, World War II. I mean, Raymond Casper, World War II. Nicholas Brown, unknown. Alan Cody, Korea. Dr. Arnold Feiger, World War II. Jerome Fox, Korea. John and Nicholas Fox, Civil. James DeHagan, Vietnam, Hugh Gennigan, World War II, Eugene Groth, World War II, Fran Groth, World War II, Lester Hansen, World War II, Norbert Hickman, Peacetime, Peter Hoffman, Civil, Clarence Yost, Peacetime, Roger Yost, Unknown, Rudolph Yost, World War II, John Young, World War II, Henry Klein, Unknown, Lawrence Klein, World War II, Jerome Koenig, World War II. Elmer Koshin, unknown. Clarence Leonard, World War II. Sylvester Leonard, World War II. Leo Noah, World War II. Adam Phillips, Civil. Alan Shaw, World War II. Jesse Thompson, Korea. Anton Wagner, World War II. Gordon Wagner, unknown. Frank Warner, World War II. Michael Weider, Civil and Vitus Werner, Civil. We'll ask Kathy to light a candle for our military at the St. Johannes Cemetery. I'm going to help Lloydie read the list. St. Johannes, Thomas Interval, the Bird Bussy, World War II. Arnold Casper, World War II. Edward Dine, Korea. Stanley Dine, World War II. Otto Deer, World War II. Johanna Giesing, Civil. Roland Fiddler, World War II. Lauren Gilman, Korea. Gardner Grudegut, World War I. Peter Hines, Civil. Peter Yost, Civil. Roger Yurt, Korea. Henry Kulp, Civil. Thomas Kleckner, Korea. Carl Knupworth, Civil. John Kreiber, Civil. John Kramer, World War II. Rene Crest Sr., World War II. Louis Cromroy, World War II. Willem Kulp, World War I. Earl Lewis, World War II. Christopher Leckler, Civil, Herman Lutze, World War I, Melvin Malik, World War II, Robert H. Meyer, World War II, Rafael Miller, World War II, Willard Pippert, World War II, John Suxy, Civil, Albert Schetzer, World War I and World War II, Rudolf Schmalfos, Civil, Kenneth Schnell, World War II, Arthur Shuri, World War II, Ludwig Singleco, Civil, Jeffrey Jefferson Singleton, World War I, Kenneth R. Voss, Korea, Raymond Voss, 
World War II, Roger Voss, Peace Corps, William Witte, World War I, Kenneth Erbstieser, unknown, he died 4-5-0-3, Harold Culp, World War II, Wallace Pippert, World War II, Elbert Ruppel, unknown, but he died in 12-14-0-2. We will now light a candle for our honored dead at the St. George Cemetery. And we'll have Joe call the roll. Melvin Ahrens, World War One. Alan Brust from Vietnam. Elvin Casper, World War Two. Eugene Dossler, World War Two. Otto Dersch, unknown. George Decker, civil. Ralph Yost, World War II, Joseph Kress, that's World War I, that's wrong. Nicholas Kress, Civil, Theodore Kress, World War II, Arthur Leonard, World War II, Gary Pfeiffer, Vietnam, Arthur Schur, World War II, Francis Van Blue, World War II, and Stephen Yankunas, serving peacetime. We will now light a candle for our honored dead at the Casa Cemetery, and Fred Jacoby will call the roll. The Casa Cemetery is, uh, I'll identify further because it's just a few hundred yards south of County X, and when you go down the I road there, and uh, Actually, its correct name is St. John's Cemetery, but uh, that's another whole evening. Uh, the veterans that are buried there are listed here. We're all from the Civil War. Heinrich Gruppi, Frederick Jacobi, Johann G. Jacobi, Christian Janning, or anglicized would be Janning, Walter Matthias, Walter Sigelko, and the last one, I, I, I'll bet a lot of money that it's, it was never pronounced the way I'm going to pronounce it, but that's the best I could do. It's W-O-K-A-L-E-K. -E uh, it looks like Wakalik, but I'm sure that was pronounced somewhat different than that. Um, this, this list is obviously incomplete because these are all Civil War veterans, and the first one that came to uh, my brother's mind was our first cousin, Robert Culp. A World War II veteran that's buried there, and I believe there are probably others that just need some research here. And now I'm going to have Kathy light our last candle for the St. John Ebenezer Reformed Church Cemetery. And I'm going to have Irene call the roll. Gustav Kriegsman, civil, Simon H. Stockmeyer, civil, Edward A. Daney, peacetime, Edward C. Emil C. Daney, World War II, Korea and Vietnam, Richard C. Daney, Vietnam, Walter Kielsmeyer, World War II, Donald Cullough, Korea, Vietnam, Orville Mott, World War II, Donald Stuckman, World War II, Cyril Svatik, Korea, Walter Yeager, World War II. I want to thank my volunteers. And the list did come from the Manitowoc County Service Veterans Office, but they tell me the list is not complete. So if we've missed anybody, we do sincerely apologize. And we're going to end our little tribute to our military people here with a little poem written by Lieutenant Colonel John McGrath, and it's entitled, In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies bow, between the crosses, roll on roll, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly. Scarcely heard aims the guns below, we are the dead, 
short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. <laughs>